trade was precipitated by the, the move up by the Rams to number one? Or, or was this something in the works even before that? Not much. We did receive calls uh, um, earlier than the Rams and, and the Titans finalized their deal. So it was something that uh, at least was, was on other teams' minds and, and ours uh, pretty early on. And we worked a pretty extensive process to understand the players that will be available to us at two and other positions that we could, could have potentially moved back to. Is this uh, an indication that you think one of those two quarterbacks will not be a, a franchise quarterback? No, I think good question. I think that could certainly be the implication. Uh, that's not necessarily what the driver of the decision was. Uh, we think, I think Wentz and Goff at this point are pretty consensus one, two in terms of the quarterbacks. Uh, there's some other talented quarterbacks in the draft as well, uh, but this shouldn't be interpreted as an indictment at all on uh, their potential You know, to be good starting quarterbacks in this league. Uh, as always, there's a risk when you're drafting any quarterback, and even if you're drafting a quarterback at first or second slot in the first round, uh, that they pan out or don't. And we understand that risk of moving back that we may have passed on our quarterback that's going to go on to uh, certainly have a great, <clears throat> great career in this league. Um, but we felt like for the other additional picks that we were able to acquire, we were in a much better position to build our roster moving forward. Are you convinced that the deal wouldn't have been sweetened closer to the draft, or is this maybe an omen that uh, maybe there's more to come? We were we were convinced. You know, a couple things. I think we really liked the eighth slot. Um, is one thing I would tell you was a was a particularly valuable uh, piece of of the deal for us. Uh, we think there's still going to be really talented players at that spot. There's a lot of depth throughout the first round this year. Uh, so we like that aspect of being able to have Philly as a trade partner. And we had very extensive conversations with Howie and his team over the last few weeks and uh, felt the deal was very fair to both sides. We understand someone else may come up and make a little bit crazier offer to Philadelphia if they're really in love with uh, one of the players that are high. And it's more than the quarterbacks, by the way, at the top of this draft. I think, um, you know, with the ends that are there, uh, some of the, the secondary players and, and the linebackers as well. Uh, it's a strong class at the top, top of the, the draft, rather. Um, some generational players there that you could see some teams coming up for. So we were tempted to stay on the clock, but we felt like the offer to move back just six spots for the picks we were able to acquire was the better bet. In explaining their trade to their people in Philadelphia, Howie Roseman said that they looked really hard at the next two drafts in the quarterback mm -hmm. prospect. Uh, how much of looking ahead did you guys consider when making this trade and passing up the number two quarterback? A bit, but I think it's dangerous to try to forecast where position groups will be. Uh, frankly, it's hard enough to do with the single year, much less trying to calculate where the sophomores and juniors are. That'll, that'll be up in the next couple of years. And guys do come out of nowhere. So um, not, not much, Tony, to be direct. Uh, you know, previous regimes trade down accumulate a bunch of picks and not capitalize on them, not hit on them. <laughs> is, is there a concern that, you, that you're sacrificing quality for quantity and just how vital is it to, to not let that happen? Um, no, directly. Uh, we, we are confident in you know, our preparation in terms of evaluating players. Uh, there's always a risk whether we were going to as somebody wrote this the other day, if we we're going to mess it up at eight, we we're going to mess it up at two also. Uh, but we, uh, not to be funny about it, we feel really good about the fact that we have, you know, what could have been um, a bet on one player now becomes a bet on four. Um, understanding that the player that you get at eight may not be the same choice that you had at two. Maybe for us in our case, actually. Um, but uh, we feel really good about our opportunity uh, to move forward and select players. Um, and that's without comparison or disparagement on the past groups. Franchise quarterbacks are typically picked number one, mm -hmm. um, sometimes number two. But uh, and it's no matter how bad a team is, it's actually hard to land in those two spots mm -hmm. uh, at, at the end of a season and heading into a draft. How much? Um, did you, how much did you factor, factor that in, that who knows when you'll ever be up this high again with an opportunity to pick one of the franchise quarterbacks? A lot. Not an easy decision. You know, I think the better decision for us, but we did factor that in a lot, Mary Kay, uh, just in terms of 
uh, you know, when are we going to be this high again and, you know, be able to select a quarterback? And uh, so we had, we certainly factored that into the decision.